Hello, and welcome back to Bard College. Um, I hope you've had a lovely time um, in the past week since we last played. Um, you are joining us as the party uh, extricated themselves from the Infinite Library into a broken off piece of rock uh, in between worlds where um, Max had, uh, not Max, sorry, Hector had seemingly extricated your book order too. Um, after falling foul of the uh, Herald of the Black Librarians um, and all kinds of um, enchanted scraps of ink and paper, you the party kind of had a chase towards a one-use portal that they actually convinced the Black Librarian to help them repair, uh, thanks to Giselle's charming effects. Uh, it looked a little bit touch and go, um, especially for those who are less able to make jumps across infinite space caverns. Uh, but um, at the conclusion of the last session, the whole party went through this portal, this teleportation circle, not knowing where it goes. Um, so, I will describe to you um, who was first through, because I'll describe it to them. Do we remember? Was it Nia because Nia. she cast it? Yeah. We went yeah, through on the so. same turn, apart from Tilly, but you were the one first. Okay. Um, Mia, you jump headlong into this modified teleportation circle. And as you go through it, having been through teleportation circles many times, you detect a difference. Um, you are moving from a place that isn't really anchored to any plane. And as you are traveling in like the uh, imperceptible time that passes, it, you are sensitive to the idea that you are flying loosely around an infinite space with no direction or anchor. For a moment, you begin to panic. Are you all going to end up in the same place? Are you going to be scattered between worlds? And just as you try to center yourself and reach out to where you are, you feel the cold stone floor beneath your feet. The, there's nothing but darkness. Your drift globe deactivated. And if I remember rightly, you don't have dark vision. Um, so it is pitch black to you. Okay. And, in, and you are in complete silence. What do you do? Okay. I think I would just take a few deep breaths, wait, expecting the others to arrive in the following seconds, moments. Okay. You maintain your composure as the fizzing and crackling of arcane energy snaps behind you. One, two, three. Four, as the rest of your companions arrive in this enclosed dark space. Funny, 
even those of you with dark vision seem unable to make out the details. Hello? Um, Hello? How? Everyone here? Why is it so dark? And... Can you not see either? I'll cast Detect Magic. I'm expecting I should be able to see. Um, you cast Detect Magic and where you usually would see some kind of arcane resonance or a, f a ghost of the weave. You don't see anything, but your spell appeals to other senses in the absence of sight. And you can almost smell necromancy and illusion. And at that moment, six seconds later, <laughs> full speed, like a cannonball till he falls in the middle of you. Ah! <laughs> Red screams, zombies! Ah! <laughs> no, no, no! It's me! It's me! Oh, silly. <clears throat> and she sort of s stands up, and um, but we can't see anything. You can't see each other either. Or... So you, you you just hear her voice higher than you would normally, but it just might not be. <laughs> and I can't even see What's the going? magic, but I can smell necromancy and almost the the buffness and muscularity in the air. <laughs> it's strange. <laughs> <laughs> they go and like feel out for where Tilly is. Uh, Tilly. <laughs> Are you still in big lizard form, Tilly? I... No, 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 no. I, you remember I took the, the potion of uh, uh, hill giant strength and yes. uh, enlarge, which means I'm twice as... Though enlarge is only going to last for a, a minute, but I'm still, yeah. I'm still <laughs> twice as high as I was. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you, like... um, you, you, you put your hand over some broad shoulders um, and squeeze and you, it, is that, is that Mir? No, it's, it's Tilly. Hey. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I took that potion you, you gave me, uh, maybe uh, taller, I needed a big jump, I'm sorry, what, what, where, where the heck are we? Uh, why is Ooh. it so dark? Well, I'll take some notes on that later. Uh, Mia, Mia, Giselle? Yep. Yeah. There's some, some magic going on here. Romancy and illusion. Uh, what's going on? Jeffrey says. Jeffrey! It's okay. He seems quite <laughs> distressed in his tone of voice. Jeffrey, cast a spell magic! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! Don't he might hurt himself. Yo. <laughs> oh. He might cast the fireball. Uh should I should I try should I try daylight? See what happens. Alright, everybody just get ready. Oh you can't see me I'm shrugging right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of covered that from the no response. Um I'm gonna try and do it. Uh, so I think I think part of daylight is if any of this spell's area overlaps with an area of darkness created by a spell of third level or lower, the spell that created the darkness is dispelled. Okay. Um, you cast the spell, but it does not seem to interfere with the magical darkness. Uh, the feedback that you would get after using that spell slot, I think, is that it's more powerful than third level. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get my crystal ball of true seeing, i.e. the lantern, Jadena's lantern, mm -hmm. and 
use it to scry and I'm going to scry on Red. No, I'm going to scry on Giselle. Mm -hmm. But it has true sight when I scry. So I should be able to scry on Giselle and her surroundings. 120 feet. So true sight allows you to see um, through illusions or see invisible targets. Oh, not it magical darkness. It does not darkness. allow you to see through magical darkness. I can see through magical darkness. Mm -hmm. For up to 120 feet, devil's sight. There we go. Oh, oh you were waiting for it. <laughs> um, no, no. I was actually looked on Red's first, um, and I was checked that, that Red didn't have it. I obviously missed that you had it. I can see in things. We just, yeah. Uh -huh. True sight so, as well now. Yeah. So, Giselle. It takes you a while for your eyes to adjust. But you realize after pe other people um, kind of panic and uh, use what tools they have to try and resolve the situation, uh, you reach out and you touch a cold stone banister that s appears in a uh, dark gray on a dark gray stairwell that goes down um it seems as though the range and extent of your dark vision is reduced right. um the magical darkness being much more powerful than any type of magical darkness you've encountered before okay. but you can see out in front of you up to about 30 feet okay Guys, guys, I can see. I can, I can. It's starting to come through. Um, I think we're we're like in a stairwell. I can only see like thirty feet. I can't see usual. Uh, wait, length, but... wait, 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 wait. The important bit. Can you, can you, can you see how tall I am? <laughs> can I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you're massive. This is, this is probably the the when the minute is up as well. <laughs> <laughs> And and I'm me again. Uh, and yeah. you're back. I but you saw, saw me for a second. transformation. Yeah, you look great, by the way. Thank you. So super powerful. I'm still very strong. strong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we're we're on a stairwell, guys. I mean, so... I can see. I can take us down or up. All right. So, uh, do we hold hands, use rope, and follow you? And if I look. In either direction, up or, or across or down. You're on a um, like a, a landing, and there there is um, a stone door behind you that almost seems collapsed in on itself, uh, like an archway with collapsed stones, huge stones and pillars. Uh, collapsed in itself. In front of you, the stairwell going down just goes straight down as far as you can see. Okay. Um, I say that to the team. Um, so we've got the door. It looks collapsed in on itself, like an archway. I don't think we just came through there, did we? Or we go down, which is just straight down, and it just keeps going. Uh. Straight down seems scarier. But then so does the doorway. <laughs> the doorway, know. it's not really a door. It's a, it looks like a collapsed tunnel or archway that's just totally, you know, it looks impassable to you. Oh, okay. Down, down, down it is, I think. Down it is. We trust you. <laughs> oh, you can see. <laughs> it will. Okay, I'm going to go first. Should we, have we got rope? Should we hold, should we hold hands? What do we want to do? I'll I just grabbed Tilly's to... hand. Are the, are the sides of this, these stairs uh, secure in any way, or are we at risk of falling? Um, it's a large uh, stairwell, Giselle, you'll be able to see. It's about 15 feet across, and at least 30 feet down. That's as far as you can see. So they are big steps that you'd have to be very careful going down. But there are no, there's no banisters that you can see? Uh, uh, yeah, there are like quite right. high banisters, yeah. Okay. Okay, so maybe just hold hands, just don't let go. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay, given the size of these steps, 
um, it's going to take, and, and given that most of you can't see, with Giselle's guidance, I'm going to give you all advantage, given Giselle's help, on a dexterity saving throw to make it down safely. <laughs> Can I be, um, I was just going to say, casting resistance on whoever uh, I'm closest to. Uh, yeah, you, you can decide who you are closest to. That's fine. I guess Tilly. You said you were Giselle. I'll be behind Tilly. Okay, I was, I was just going to say, do me here, do me here, but it's too late now. We <laughs> see her rolls. We see her rolls. Okay, mine's not great either. It's the D4, isn't it? Oh, God. You have a D4, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> we all this absolute shite. <laughs> 16 uh, is the highest. We got 7, yeah. 13, yeah. 11, and 16. Uh, Giselle, um, you, you don't need to make it because you can see. Um, you're just helping everybody else, so that don't worry about that 11. Uh, Red, uh, you are naturally graceful, um, and with Giselle's help, you're able to make it down uh, safely. Uh, the rest of you take um, a couple of bumps and scrapes. It's almost as if these stairs are like built for a giant or something. Mm. They're uh, huge. Um, but each of you can take, oh, yikes, five points of bludgeoning damage if you fail that save as you land on your keisters at the bottom of these stairs, only about 30 feet down. Mm. Okay. Billy, you're wow. okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. half your height anyway. I mean, double your height it, even. It's, I, I really enjoyed being tall for a minute. Uh, we got to get me more of that potion. <laughs> it was, was really, really I, I really did, like, I thought, I thought you all um, left me there and I was all alone for a few seconds and it was uh, scary, but you should have seen me take the leap. That was pretty magnificent. Well, well done for making it through. Um, sorry, you're not so big anymore. Um, but anyway, we made it though, yeah. Don't know if we should be quiet though. Whoosh. Um Okay, we're at the bottom of the stairs. What can I see? Um the in front of you you see a jagged stone wall. Um and the the partially worked stone um that you've landed upon seems to branch around to the right. Looking around to the right you see um, six really tall columns ahead of a, like, plateau. Um, and it looks like there might be an edge or a kind of natural rock structure about, mm, well, it, you, your vision starts to kind of get, get difficult past that kind of plateau. Okay. Um... There's there's some columns this way, and potentially nothing after them. Um, I think this is the only way we can go, though. There doesn't seem to be a big stone wall in front of us. It's getting darker. Okay. Okay. Let's let's carry on this way. Grab Tilly's hand again. Do we still have Max? Yeah. Uh, he didn't do the save, did he? Hold on. <laughs> And Jeffrey as well. Roll me a d20 um, and uh, yeah, just roll, in fact, roll me a straight d20, Kirsty. We'll see how Jeffrey does. An eight. Oh, no. <laughs> Did he not get advantage? Uh, Is it yeah. straight? Oh. Sorry, that's what. Yeah, I was just, I was thinking modifiers rather than anything else. 16. Good, Jeffrey. Uh, he's okay. Jeffrey, um, minus three dexterity. Um, Max is quite dexterous. And uh, he rolls a 21. So he's okay. Nice. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, so are you leading everybody uh, towards the plateau, Giselle? That's all I can okay. 
uh, well then, uh, let me describe what happens next. Just got to arrange a couple of things. De -de 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 -de. <laughs> Okay. Um, as you lead your companions through this impenetrable darkness, Giselle, um, you walk down the middle of this arrangement of six columns. Um, and as you do, uh, each one lights up. <laughs> with magical blue flame, which returns everybody else's vision. Um, as you uh, are all um, reacquainted with your sense of sight, everything is, t this kind of blue rock is tinted with uh, kind of blue light and flame. Everybody kind of looks partially silhouetted in this uh, dimly lit blue cavern. Um, the plateau stretches out before you, and you can see um, over the edge of this rock a, a barrier, a, a wall of gentle blue flame kind of dancing across the expanse like an aurora borealis. Uh, and I'll take you to the map now. Ooh. Oh my god. It becomes apparent to you that at the edges of this chamber are innumerable skeletal bones discarded in piles of various shapes and sizes. You have wandered in to a place where many humanoids and creatures drew their last breaths. <laughs> Just Snacks. Well, shit. Whoa. That's a... Uh... This is a lair, yeah, isn't it? Um... <laughs> um... Okay. As you wonder just what lair you have found yourselves in, a voice echoes across pale rock. Um, hold on, let me just... Um, you hear the gruff, grasping voice of a large, huge, creature reverberating off the walls. Who disturbs my slumber? And with that, I want you all to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no! Is it a magical effect? No. Oh dear. Uh, okay, I need to roll for Max. Oh, uh, Max got a crit. Um, however, uh, Tilly, Giselle, Red, and Jeffrey, um, you are all paralyzed. Nice. M Mia. And Max are not. You are frozen with fear. 
Uh, I will say you can still talk, but your speed is zero. Because it's so scary. Uh, I think only, yeah, well, yeah, if, everybody can still talk, so you can answer it if you wish. This voice around this cavern. Um, and we just came from the infinite library. He said you would come. Hector. Oh, I know. No, Hector. But you Chief. are a visitor. I've had too many visitors. My master will be displeased. Uh, who... who are you? You find yourself in the lair of a dragon that once was. Uh, and, uh, who is your master, if I might ask? My master aspires to ascend the throne. He granted me life once more. Um, uh, did, did anyone bring you any books <laughs> recently? <laughs> Time for literature has passed. <laughs> Though, one tome in particular, I had great interest in reading. Ah, uh, the, the herbal tone, I assume. A pamphlet, in comparison to the Codex Eternus. It, it just happens to be a copy of the Codex Eternus made actually I, I commissioned it um, and I'm also interested in reading that book what is your interest in matters of life and death <sighs> Well, I, I worship the goddess Mistra. So you'll understand my interest in that book. Said that you would claim it and usurp him if I but allowed it. Is he here? My lord has other matters to attend to, but I may summon him if I can be convinced to. And with that, he, uh, this creature you can see, uh, shifts beyond the precipice of this 
uh, plateau. And you see this huge, lumbering, skeletal, draconic form. Uh, I'll put the token on the... They are shrouded in black mist. Oh, I guess you're just breathing into your microphone there. Um, and uh, the what what could only be described if you could uh, describe it this way is a, a wide, toothy, skeletal smile as it kind of poke, rears its head up atop uh, of this blue f barrier of blue flame, and you can see blue flaming eyes where a dragon's pupils would be. Um, I would like anyone proficient in nature to make a nature check. Tilly, you've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. Too paralyzed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I've been gone for decades. My master has returned me to life. My insatiable hunger is boundless. In order to sustain myself, I must consume or learn. And he put, you can see now, he puts his poor front claw on a stack of books. <laughs> these, are these, these are our, our books? Mm -hmm. Mr. Dragon? Mm -hmm. The books were delivered to my master and bequeathed upon to me. I can summon him. But I would not recommend it. Why not? His power stretches beyond the realms of life and death. He read this Codex Eternus studiously, and it granted him the gift to return me to life. He could sever the threads of your souls from the weave with a glance. God. Is he? Mir, is he, is he talking about your guy? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, right. Okay, we don't want to see him, do we? Well, we're not here to be consumed. And those books do belong to us. And your master is perfectly able to go and make copies for himself. Is he not? My master covered those magics which would help him ascend. The knowledge should not be acquired lightly. Copies should not be made without showing the true dedication to the arts of the arcane. These copies should not fall into the wrong hands, as is my instruction. Tell me, what is your instruction?
to make sure that magical items and magical books don't fall into the wrong hands. No, to protect them. Have you ever considered that the wrong hands might be your own? Have? Perhaps I should not summon my master. Perhaps I should relinquish those trinkets which you carry in those hands of yours. He would be pleased, and I would be most proud to serve him. I don't think he will be pleased, actually. I don't think he wants me to die at the hands of anyone like you. And I think you should summon him. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> Whilst I rewrite this campaign. <laughs> no, give me a second. Uh, summoning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please stay on hold. Please stay on the line. Yeah, genuinely, I'll just need a sec. <laughs> Kirsty just killed us all. <laughs> awesome. This had to happen at some point. I'm in. Um... Lucy, do you know who it is? This is your... Uh, like opposite, you better yeah. fight to the death, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> Isn't it? Wasn't it? Am I wrong in that it was this where the ghosts with the masks were? That was his layer in the school. You lost me. Yeah, not yeah. very good at explaining things. <laughs> no, that was that uh, was Silver Eyes. And he is a dragon, we think. Silveranth is no, a dragon that was at Draxmore yeah. College that had the mask that went on the ghostly figure. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and right. Her, yeah. Silveranth this is... is connected to her enemy, though, right? They, no. they had a meeting. They had a meeting. Yeah. But, but he was... Silveranth was not dead? No. Not for I decades. Mean, huh? In Gone for a Yeah. Period. That would be weird if it was him, because that would mean this is this is the dragon that destroys Tilly's life. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, can't be. <laughs> um, with uh, a um kind of a, a posturing, this undead dragon uh, tilts his head to one side and utters an incantation. The incantation is in Celestial. Um, and if you speak Celestial, you would hear something akin to a calling out to the prospective Prince of the Scales, Herald of the Wall of Agony, and Magister Incarnate. Um, and with that, the dragon's eyes uh, go out 
and as do all of the flames around the uh, six pillars, only momentarily, as with a gust of wind and a crack of green arcane magic, the uh, what were blue flames and will still be blue flames on the map are replaced with green flames. And atop of the plateau, you see a lonely figure. They're with their back to you. They face the undead dragon. And they turn. <laughs> You now see the cloaked face of Dr. Zeth Lonespell. Oh. I'll move to the front of the of the group and as I do I'll kind of mutter uh if this turns nasty you mustn't help me. And I'll stand at the bottom of the plinth and look up at him. Well, well. You made it all the way through the infinite library. Despite my best efforts, you were able to repair the only remaining copy of the Codex Eternus. But you didn't count on me reacquainting myself with my old friend, Hector. He was there, you know, on the day my wife was murdered. I didn't know. I sought him out when I heard by the House of the Yellow Rose that he was gone. A lot more than your companions did. Nemerinalo. I'd never met him till today. Yesterday. Time is very strange in the Infinite Library. My friends were young and inexperienced, and they believed there was no hope for him. Cynical attitude. One that betrays your selfishness and the selfishness of your friends. My selfishness? You covet these magical items. The ones that you ordain yourself in and parade around like Mistress Whore. What about what you covet, Zeth? I covet one thing only. It is not glory. It is not a station. It is not an entire catalogue of temples spread across Cerulea dedicated to my own vanity. It is the power to be with the one I love once more. However, our day of destiny is not today. 
not if you can put aside your unselfish goals and look at the bigger picture. And what's that? The Isles are in danger. The whole of Turil be plunged into a darkness more powerful than the one you stumbled down those stairs into. Oh yes, I was watching. Creepy. You know of what I speak. I do. Those elves, pseudo Saruk elves, sit beneath centuries of tradition and established rule, rigid hierarchies and structures that cannot be questioned by outsiders. If you've ever been to Menelambir, you'll know that they do not give up power easily. And they know only to turn their attention towards the destruction of all the other peoples of the Isles. Human, Janassi, Tiefling, Halfling, even changeling kind, mm. will be no more. Surely that's good news for an aspiring god of death. It is even beyond the god of death's power to return a trillion souls lost to a genocide to wrest them from an endless nightmare brought about by Dendar. And we'll leave it there. No! <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no <we laughs> see you, um, see you soon. See you in 20 minutes, folks. Are right. you kidding? <laughs>
welcome back. Um, what do we say to the prospective god of death? Maybe next time? I don't know. Yeah. Um, they, the party found themselves in the lair of this undead dragon, whose identity is still not being confirmed. Uh, when um, posturing uh, against him, the uh, Mia um, instructed him to summon his master. Uh, and here we are with Zethlon Spell himself. Uh, ha having just revealed the uh, imminent threat to Cerulea from something called Dendar. I can't hear you, Kirsty. You? Nope. You've gone. Wah. What great timing. Hello? Oh, yeah. there you go. So oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, our day is not today. Because of this great threat, So influential have you and your star seekers become that I believe that lobbying against the establishment of Menelambir unaided would give either one of our sides disadvantage too deep to overcome. We need to cooperate. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. Look, I think I've already cooperated. I think the last time we spoke properly, we made a deal. You made a bargain with me that if I didn't save the life of Kelimvor, you would give up your role as the Magister. It's not what you want. Eventually, you want to ascend. This is a step on your way. Make a persuasion check, me. Oh, okay. <sighs> it's true. I asked you to step aside and not save the life of the lion's bane, that avatar of Kelimvor, who languished on the high seas, once a strange arcane anomaly pierced the veil. I've been unable to determine what caused Kelimvor's position to weaken and him to be thrust through the divine gate. But I sensed an opportunity. However, my research has hit a wall. My offer was predicated on the assumption that I would be able to continue to make progress towards assuming his position. My progress has been thwarted by the sycophants at the Varde Mechum, who wish to hoard their arcane secrets while using them also to bring about untold death and destruction at the hands of a Saruki legend, a phenom from beyond. Kelimvor's realm. Seems as though Kelimvor was the one who would watch over Dendar and keep them sequestered in a cave. Kelimvor being deceased seemed to have had unintended consequences. It's not just a vacant throne. 
but an empty cave where this night serpent feasts upon the nightmares and fears of all those who tremble and they look into the void or under their beds bringing about such a terrible primordial evil threatens to blacken out the sun itself and plunge us all into eternal darkness which is my way of saying numerinalo that all bets are off you and i can resume our disagreement when there is a world left to fight for and souls left to save So what are you going to do in the meantime? How are you helping this by holding on to this title that you don't want and waiting to ascend into a title that you desperately covet? And you know that the title would help me fight this, but I don't know what you're doing. And I don't think we have to be against each other. I think we could work together like Mr. and Kellenvor once did, like they wrote that book together. I'm willing not to vacate my power, but to cooperate and enhance yours until the time comes. I'll share the secrets of the Codex and the other lesser tomes that were transcribed. If you ally with me, and we rally against the forces of Menelambia, the Onassis, the um, the forces of Inelian, of Aran and Thalor. These elves have been plotting Dendar's return for longer than you or I ever heard of the Isles. My position of Magister has, in has enabled me to uncover this conspiracy. to power greater than I could have ever asked for. But it is not so easy to wield that I would bequeath the title to you and that you would resume the full capacity of its power in a 10 day. It has taken months of dedication. Months that we don't have. I make an insight check on him. Yep. Ugh. He seems forthright. So you stole those books from us to get to talk to me, to tell me, no, you're not ready <laughs> to be the Magister. No. I intercepted your books so that I would have a bargaining chip. A play. An ace up my sleeve. If you wish to challenge me without the power of the Codex Eternus, then it wouldn't be too presumptuous to tell you you will die.
And if I don't ally with you? If you betray me. Or you choose not... Well, if you choose not to ally with me, then we will find ourselves splitting the battlefield three ways instead of in half. A lack of trust only begets a lack of cooperation. And a lack of cooperation would only enhance both of our chances of defeat and hasten the doom of the Isles. However, if I were to bequeath these books unto you under the assumption an agreement that we could cooperate and you were to shoot me in the back, he says as he recalls memory of his own death. Then I would unleash the full extent of my allies. And he turns backwards and the undead dragon arches up onto its hind legs and presses both of its bony skeletal claws against the side of its stone chamber. Zendeth was present in the settlement wars, you know. It's waited a long time to get a taste of a fresh war with the elves. Why should I trust you? You're facing death with either choice. <clears throat> Just know that whether you die by my hand or by the hands of some conspiratorial Saruki spies, or even the nightmare serpent themselves. It may be me who casts judgment over your soul. Do you want to take the risk? Do you think you'll ever get there? As someone who makes deals and doesn't keep them? turns back from the dragon. I told you, the environment has changed. I am here not to cut you some kind of underhanded bargain, not to throw you sc scraps from my better anointed table. I'm here speaking to you as an equal, requesting your help in a matter of global urgency. Your own title and your own covetous means are a distant, distant second, and so am I. I don't believe you think of me as equal. You called me Mistress Whore about three minutes ago. And will parade themselves around, wielding an ancient scepter as if it was some golden door knocker. There's no need to throw stones here, Zeth. This is what I mean. It's clear that you don't see me as an equal. But I'll take the books. And I would like to set a time to face you properly. I thought that we could get 
through this together. I thought that we didn't have to fight. I thought there was a way around this, but give me those books. If you truly believe in fighting against the evils above, then I will. I'm not going to join you on that, but I'll be doing that too. We will be doing that too. And then I'll see you after or during. You may yet prove yourself to be more than my equal. I'm not so vain as to see the potential in others. And I know Mistra hears you call. But she and I have more of a dialogue. Do I believe did that? You, <laughs> did you just say your mom likes you more than her? Because that is a weak, weak. Um... Yeah. Did Don't you want to make an insight check? Did you say me? Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen. You're unsure about whether he's is really speaking from the heart here, or he's just trying to wind you up. Very well. You and I will face each other once this is over. But until then, I will pass on the knowledge that you require to take the next step. If you do not wish to work directly together, then I understand. I'd prefer to work with the friends that already think that I'm your equal and fit to fight you. I have nothing to prove to you. Not right now, anyway. You may yet be more courageous than I give you credit for. I will leave you to concoct your own plan. So effective have you been at claiming victory from the jaws of defeat in the past. I will say that I've been less successful in recruiting cooperation in the past. My acquaintance, Zendeth here, alerted me to the presence of an amethyst dragon named Silveranth. You met with him recently. He is vain and covetous, as many dragons are. And you see, like, Zendeth, like, go onto his haunches and kind of raise his, like, winged shoulder blades. And with a turn, his head is cowed like a loyal hound at the foot of his master. Silveranth cannot be trusted. However, it does have a weakness. If we're to destabilize the elven conspiracy, the cell of traitors, these Saruki conspirators, then we should do our best to chip away at their 
solidity. There is an item that would allow one to maintain control over Silveranth. And it is currently in possession of your allies, Tiefling. I've been unsuccessful in infiltrating the ranks of the Cerulean Central Commission. Since that ordeal with the Blood King, it seems as though the wizard clone has gone into hiding. With Perhaps the item? You'll be... I believe it's in their possession. One who calls himself Manshun. Mm. If you wish to face Silveranth without me, then you do well to acquire that gauntlet. I will endeavour to attack the Sarukis from another angle. When the time is right, I am sure our pincer movement will converge. And we must claim victory before the snake is summoned. have one other question. How is Tara? Tara's soul is sustained by my own. She is but an echo on the wind. A distant hand just out of reach in my dreams. A reflection of a tear. I'm no longer able to cry. I will save her. If you think often about what she would say about how you go about things, Tara, though she is my child, she is still a child. And children do not often have the perspective to see the urgency in all things. Everything I do, I do for her, and when we are reunited, she will know that. I really hope so. When the time is right, I will fulfill my promise, and we shall have our day of destiny. And with that, he opens his hand towards Zendeth, newly crowned the Soul Herald. My squire will see that you receive your literature. You may be gladdened to know that this lair is beyond space and time. And wherever you should travel, onward from this place, it will be as but a second had passed since you entered. 
Farewell, Star Seekers. I'll see you on the battlefield. And he <laughs> disappears in a green flash of arcane magic. I look at Jeffrey. Uh, he is drooling. <laughs> uh, all of you are no longer paralyzed. I'll turn around to everybody. That was tense. Yep. <sighs> are you okay? Wow. I don't know. I think was... so. I... I think Scary. I did the right thing. I just. I think he's deluded. I... Yeah. And I don't he... think I mind that he's probably still watching. Well, he, he clearly must believe this threat is real and mm. so dangerous that he would just. Hold. <sighs> yeah. Although I really didn't like the fact that he's made it as as if he's given you this favor of returning the book that he stole from you. That was mm. a bit like, he didn't really give you anything. <laughs> well, I guess no. that's the truth. But, no, um, but I'd, I'd rather be underestimated, you know? Well, he doesn't think right. very highly of me. You no. may yet be as courageous, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely detected a bit of a, um, underestimation there, for sure. Mm. And that's going to be his downfall, of course, because you're awesome. You could have taken him right here, right now. I believe that. But I think you've done the right thing. seems sincere in his wish to fight against Dendar. Hmm. I learned a new thing. Seems the the dragon that killed or almost killed everybody I loved is on the opposing side of where we are. And that kind of that kind of makes me feel okay. Hmm. The one with our books? No, no. Oh. Oh, I see. Because I wasn't sure if we're not going to have to work with him because whatever, but he's clearly on the opposite side from as far as we can trust Lone Spell. But I guess that's for, you know, the future. We've got a extra planar visit, but the book's first. Everybody okay? Uh, you all feeling good? Yeah. <laughs> Better now he's gone. Yeah. Great that we didn't die. Mm -hmm. uh, Max comes over to you, Red. Um, can we talk? I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go talk about the whatever this gauntlet is. I don't know, but uh, you go talk over there. <laughs> um, at this point, uh, Zendeth flies over to the uh, plateau where Lone Spell was stood and drops a stack of tomes uh, before physically dissipating into shadow. That's so cool. I want to do that. Wait, I can. You... Wait, is, it... <laughs> is it is it a uh, dim light apart from the glowing green? Yeah. Okay, just that experiment. Um, she's going to shadow walk to where the books are and start to pick them up. Yeah, as as soon as uh, Zendeth dissipates, there's this like blanket of black shadow. And as it dissipates, Giselle is stood there by the books like that. <laughs> <laughs> Magician, I don't know. <laughs> Got a stack of cards. I'll have you know, guys. I'll play cards oh. one day. Um, yeah. Um, so I will uh, 
before me and John do this little bit, um, you can add. Uh, hold on, I have created all of those books. Um, but I I changed some of the names because, um, I just didn't like them as much. So bear with me. <laughs> um, just have to sort by. All right, okay. So, um, one of them I found, and it was better than the one that I was going to create. And so that's why one of them is a lot better than what you paid for, but that's lucky for you. Um, Giselle, if you just add umbral tome, uh -huh. you'll find that is significantly more powerful than you thought. Oh. If you read the, it's a very detailed and complicated description, though. Okay. Um, you also was it was tabulations of the razor also yours yep so that in that so i removed the handles bit so it's just tabulations of the razor as well okay um tilly had uh i just called it the hexen herbarium rather than yep. hippies hexen herbarium yep um oh Hang on, it looks like I've created two items for the Clock of Fate. Let me just delete one. Yeah. It looks like they're the same. So I'll just delete one. Um, uh, Red, John, you can add the Clock of Fate and the arcane apocrypha. Apocrypha is spelled A P O C R Y P H A. Oh, I, it's not quite. Oh, one of the things isn't working. Hold on. I like this description. Why am I not seeing mine? What are, I'm typing just in. Umbral tome, just not the umbral tome, just umbral tome. In managing venture, in yeah. filter, I found yeah. it, Lucy. Why am I not seeing? Oh, do I have a setting weird? Is your homebrew not turned on? It should be. You've got Witcher Circle and everything. I turned it on. You wait for me. Oh, well, don't wait for me, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll see you if I help? can add it on your sheet. I did have it added on your sheet. Done. Yeah, so this is, I don't know why it hasn't come up for you. I've just put it on your sheet. Might I just refresh your page? Can I have the Codex Eternus back? Uh, you can, yeah. I, I can see it now. Feel free to share any details. Hopefully they're similar to what you hoped for. Better even. Mm-hmm. What you got? What you got? Uh I think I just wanted to check um the two D four plus one days. Mm -hmm. Uh um do I do I roll it now? Is there anything that I've already done? Uh, yeah, you've already read it for a day. 
So that's why I was just giving you the... Oh. Oh, God. I've got to spend 80 hours reading mine. Is that right? 80 hours reading yours. Nice. Mm -hmm. Woof. And <laughs> Good then make thing. a... We can, we can, pick. We'll, we'll have lots of time reading, uh, journeying through Pantheponium. That's that. <laughs> just <laughs> block your ears and, uh, yeah. Woof. Yeah. So... Um, you have to read it for seven days then, mm -hmm. which is fair enough. It gives you some pretty powerful stuff. Um, yeah. if you if you notice there, it says the wielder may choose to gain immunity, resistance, or vulnerability to the effects of any potion they consume. I like that. Uh, so any potion, not only the ones I've created, but any potion. Yeah, any potion. And can I give myself vulnerability to a health potion? Uh, yeah, so like you <laughs> take double the health from whatever yeah. you roll. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds cool. All right. Uh, the, um, the the time reading it is a way for me to get around, like, and still balance the attunement requirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just um, I just thought I was gonna ask about like what does like, a, you know, like those seven day, like a day. What does it is it does it mean twenty four hours of reading? So. 24 um, hours times no, 7. I'm and... going to say that um, you need to spend like seven long rests, like two oh, hours at a time. Gotcha. gotcha. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. That's generous. Mm -hmm. I'll dig it. I like it. Uh, okay. Anybody want to share any of any others? Well, I got the. Arcane Apocrypha, which is uh, a couple of big spells and um, you can only recharge it in a place of worship or anti-magic field and Ooh. good couple charges two charges in it yeah, I hope uh, that's worked, I haven't tested that one I can access the spells from the description Fine. Um, it doesn't seem to automatically go into my spells. I can just click them in the book. Okay, yeah. that's that's okay then. Do, to be honest, it's kind of charge... better anyway because it won't confuse me on my spells lots. Yeah, okay. Um, it doesn't require attunement, I don't think. Does it? It, it? it does. It's uh, it oh, does, does it? That yeah. one does. Yeah. Sorry, I was just trying to. I was looking at your sheet, and it's. Oh, so but actually, yeah. if I do it, maybe it will drop into the. Yeah. Mine doesn't. Uh, at least not from the description. No, I don't. So if yours doesn't, it probably means that it requires achievement. I'm just... Sorry. What, what do you mean, mine? No. No, no, it's John's. John's, yeah. Because he's, yeah, he's oh, definitely does, yeah, significantly yeah, it works. more it powerful. In. Yeah. Yeah, two eighth level spells is worth attuning for, probably. Damn. Without uh, using slots? Yeah, because they have charges. That's amazing. Yeah, it uses charges. Sick. So that was one of the books you've got? Uh, yeah. Have you read the one yet? The Clock of Fate, which basically I just have to go away and get this uh, the component crafted, but it completely overpowers Soul Cage. So you can use the soul as much as you want. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> also, that you can return the soul to a body. Uh, oh fuck, anybody? Not just its body? Any, but, uh, you can return it to a vessel or body that's died within the past 24 hours. Fucking hell. Oh, I've, I've made a type oh. as per the resurrection spell, it should say. But if you do that, uh, your, your clockwork, the prison is destroyed. Does that mean your magic item is destroyed? No, you can just make another one. You can make another one. Uh, the book is the... Ooh. Got super top secret instructions in it on how to make the component. Oh, so you, you should at least you should at least grab you know well, at least do a couple if possible. A few of them yeah. if possible. Damn. 
this this looks like a perfect perfect thing to do to loan spell you <laughs> just say <laughs> okay i think i fixed that uh, typo but yeah nice what's your what's your umbral tone lucy um so i've got to read it for seven days and do an arcana check and if i don't get that arcana check i won't be able to use it um for another six months um damn yeah yeah let me know before you do it so it can uh, give you advantage on that uh yeah yep yeah. it's my arcane focus uh and I get a bunch of spells that are always prepared and do not count against your number of prepared spells. Um, Hex, Bestow Curse, Magic Circle, Polymorph, haha, <laughs> which I already had, haha, <laughs> badly. Uh, planar Binding, Planar Binding, and Scrying, which actually is the other book that I could have read to sort of understand how Mia does that. Thing. There's just too, there's too many books. We're, too many. I had, I had we're becoming already. fucking librarians already. Okay, so also inscribe the ritual spells into the book without expending spell slots while the book is in their possession. So I get them so for yeah. free. You can copy rituals into your spell book and cast them without spending spell slots, which is just ritual casting, basically. It's a feat. Um, but the, probably the best thing, I think, is the, the last part of the description. I haven't got two. The last Shit. bullet. <laughs> um, no, S under the subtitle "High Coven Magic." Whereas the attuned spellcaster, and between two and twelve other creatures may take part in a ritualistic form of spellcasting known as the Ritual of the Moon. Uh, I like that. It is a form of free form spellcraft, similar to that of the spell wish. It allows for any existing spell effect to be replicated or for entirely unique spells to be cast limited only by the intent of the spellcasters. This ritual takes... Insane. That's the number of hours equal to the level of the expended spell slot. Uh... So you could do an eight-hour ritual to replicate an eighth-level spell or a nine-hour ritual to do a nine-level spell, but that nine-hour ritual you could use to cast Wish or any other kind of magic you can think of. Um, if you want to do something magical that is not part of an existing spell, you could use this book to call upon shadow magic to help you make it possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's the similar magic. to... The yeah, it's similar to doing a... <laughs> yeah, it's similar to doing like a resurrection ritual. So... If you want to accomplish something magical, you can all bring something to the table to help make it happen. Um, and you, it's similar to the resurrection ritual. We'll roll a d20 to see if you're successful and see if you can spell cast the spell or not. So it's really fucking powerful magic. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I need to read that again. And then the, for tabulations, I've just rolled... Um, of the razor there and it's so i've got six days to read that one um and i can have immunity to any effect that allows others to read my mind which i think is the ring is doing but i don't really talk about the ring so i might attune to something else now um and i can sacrifice a spell slot or a 1d12 hp to keep a charm target from realizing it's charmed as well mm. so that's quite nice that is cool mm. yeah Yeah, so tabulation of the rays are obviously less of a big deal than the umbral tome, but yeah. The umbral tome is like codex level, I guess. Mm. Big. Mm -hmm. um, and do we already know what the um, codex does? I do. I'm happy to share it. Is it going to just destroy the chat? <laughs> Probably. Yes. <laughs> um, and like, to summarize, it contains a bunch of spells 
Um, Got it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is. I think it's. Dana said before, it's one of those ones that gets better as you level up. But I think I've got everything. I'm level. Yeah, because you're such a high level, level, you can get the most out of it. Yeah. So it's the one where if I take necrotic damage, I can transmute some of that into healing energy. Um, which is cool. I can try and take control of undead creatures or make copies of them, rather, I think. Um, <laughs> Z Xerox the undead. <laughs> Xerox the yeah, zombies. make a copy. Cool. Um, I can either do the finger of death or the resurrection spell. If I take damage from radiant or necrotic, I become immune to that type of damage for one minute. Um, oh, and it ups my intelligence or my wisdom. Um, and an undead creature who targets you with an attack or harmful spell must first succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Uh, on a fail save, the creature must choose a new target or lose that attack or spell. Are liches undead? They are, right? Good to know. <laughs> Um, and occasionally I'm going to experience emotions and attitudes of its previous owners. Ooh. Mm. Who was its previous owner? Who, who we just met? Yeah. Well, oh. yeah, like, but through the ages, mainly, though, as well. Like, Mr. and Kellen Vaughan? Is that kind of what it's getting at? Previous uh, Magisters? It, it yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like a roll table. I'm sure I will have to roll when I have a tune to it. Does at will mean, just without using a spell slot, you still need the gold pieces or whatever to make it work? Um, it dep if, it's, if it's casting through a spell for an item, usually you don't need the material components. Um, it, it if you've got a specific question about at will, which spells are you talking about? Because, for instance, in Lucas, in your you know that in your accounting and evaluation of all things, even though it comes up with a list of spells saying at will, uh, we've said that you have to consume a spell slot to use yeah, that. I've, but there's yeah, just yeah. no way to mechanically put a spell that isn't on your class's list into your spell, uh, into your spells table. So it might be a case of that. So which which one are you talking about? Well, all six of them say at will. Um, ah, from the Umbral Totem, you mean? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, those spells, uh, yes, they are at will because uh, they're fifth level and lower, and at this level, I think that's fair enough. So I don't need a spell slot nope. to be consumed, and but I still need the bits that make the spell work? Um, like... Gold dust. Uh, uh, yes, you still need the components for those. Okay. It just doesn't consume a spell slot in the book. The book is the magical thing allowing you to do it. But because the book's all about rituals and stuff, you definitely still need the components. I've got some like spells that have like really expensive components but i but you you said previously yeah for your for your one uh in that that book that you've got you uh can just cast them without this nice. because it's cast through the item that's sick i have some very expensive components to try and acquire mm-hmm Uh, so, uh, with Zendeth having dissipated for now, you're unsure whether you uh, are being watched, but you remain in this uh, dimly lit lair of this pseudo Dracolich. It's not really a Dracolich, it's something else. Um, 
I was prepared for a fight, but we have negotiated our way. Some cooperation. Saws. No, no. I, 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 you know, I just wanted to say, like, you know, it could have gone a whole nother way. We could, we could be on like round four or five now or something, but <laughs> you've managed to, uh, yeah, persuade Lone Spell that you can be a useful ally or at least not dissuade him from that belief that he may have held already. Um, He's given you some things to think about. You've got some books to read. Question is, are you going to stick around and read them here or go elsewhere? Huh. He did say he did say this place is time shielded from the rest of the mm, reality, right? Mm. If we literally just took a month off, mm. <laughs> or <laughs> like, <but> I, yeah. <laughs> we could just do that, and Read though, with no though food. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think food might be a problem. I, I have some spells that could, uh, help, but um, yeah, I have a spell. I I could like we could prepare spells that can just create food and water. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we. I don't think we really want to do that. Maybe 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 just one long rest at least or. Because what we're do what we're doing next is um, we we're gonna get we're gonna take Jeffrey somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would suggest that we zapped uh, one of my many narcissistic temples <laughs> <laughs> and leave him probably with. I I gotta be honest, Mir. I thought you were gonna blast him right there and then when he said that. <laughs> I was already getting my heal spell ready to su to support <laughs> you. <laughs> I tried to goad you, but credit you resisted. <laughs> that was some good goading. <laughs> Mistress Hall <laughs> didn't do you're, it. You're Vain. narcissistic. When you watch it back, I think my eye like twitched like. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um... On that, though, I do mean it. If you're there, when, if and when I fight him, you can't help me. Why not? You have to die? For, for the, so... If we fight and I don't win, I have to die. It's It'd my be like fate. a no contest. You know, they'll disqualify the result. No title will be won. Yeah. There'll just be a shimmering orb of Magister, and whoever grabs it first wins. No. Uh, if I'm dying, if I'm nearly dead, you have to leave it. I don't know if Tilly can do that. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that, Mia. <laughs> might have to not be there when it happens then. Maybe I might Tilly have... has to be dead first. I might have. Well, that's. that's, that's... That's a bit. I don't know how you make these jokes out of no. <laughs> Giselle. <laughs> I've got a if... morbid sense of humor, okay? I can yeah. make this newfangled uh, soul cage then. If you do die, maybe we can snatch your soul and bounce in the next turn. <laughs> like, well, we yoink, all know death plane is shift, not... boom, back to the temple. Death is not really the end, maybe. Sometimes it could be, but. Well. <sighs> That's after the end of the world, though. That like like the end of the world, save the yeah. world. Then that, okay. So hopefully, by that time, will we? Maybe, maybe during the whole thing, he'll get eaten by something. Who knows? Maybe you won't even have to fight him. What happens to the title if something else eats him? Like Dendar. What if you can we make feed a him to religion Dendar? check if you want? Uh... <laughs> Mayor, you you've studied this for a while, but you yeah. might know that answer. Guidance. Can I also cast guidance on myself? Oh, I've had I've been guided. Thank you. Guidance. Hey. Good. Good roll. Twenty three. Okay. Um. So. You know that. Uh. Yeah. Most. 
contests, 98% of contests between magisters has resulted in the destruction of at least one of the contestants. Um, there um, has never been an occasion where it's been a draw um, because at that point, Mistra actually judges who has given the most arcane performance and grants the title of Magister to that person um, and destroyed the other person. Um, yeah. Where a Magister has died, the blessing of the Magister is just passed to the next most powerful arcane practitioner in the world. Which clearly would be you. Right, so it it's be. not so just he, that so you have to beat him. You have to be the next powerful person. No, no, but that's going to be her. Listen, the, Red, you're not looking at it the right way. It's not that we can't help her. It's that when time comes, we tie her up and all of us go kick his ass and then she'll automatically become the Magister and she'll be safe. Oh, and yeah, interference um, is prohibited by magic. Um, so if somebody does try and get involved and kind of swing the fight in one person's favor. Um, mm -hmm. Presence here. Hold on one sec. <laughs> Some guys here. Um, then, uh, yeah, those people are destroyed. Uh, okay, so, but, but if... <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, I'll let you think about it and decide what you want to do next. Uh, yeah. But we're going to take a ten-minute break, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right. See you shortly.
Welcome back. Sorry, we had to take a brief birthday break. <laughs> um, it's my birthday. Stan's birthday. Yeah, it's Stan's birthday. Hey. <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the uh, party are. We're back with the party in uh, the lair of Zendeth, the Soul Herald. Um, who has bequeathed them with the books that they requested um, and left paid them for. in shadowy silence. Yeah, paid for. Hmm. Yeah. Requested um, and paid for. Yeah. Yeah. Stolen and returned. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, what did he say? I said you stole them and he went, um, I intercepted them. <laughs> yeah. Because... Stole them! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, you, it is, uh, it is cold and dark and laden with bones, but you know that you are, um, kind of on a break from reality out here in a place that's separate from the plains. Is this where, uh... Is this, you know, was this place of Lone Spell's creation? Is it Zendeth's lair ripped from space and time? It's very unclear as to where you are or how this place came to be. Yet, you find yourself in solace, in silence, with a chance of respite. With the dim uh, blue flames once more. Uh, flickering in the darkness. Uh, Jeffrey is still transfixed by the colours. Um, but you can see him like, begin to shiver. What do the rest of you want to do? Do we want some rations handed out? I've got seven left. I've got five. We can make a feast. Yeah. That's yeah, you can all uh, take a ration, uh, whether it's off your own supply or Gisela sharing, I don't know. I'll uh, take one of yours, please. Yep. Do you want to give... Tilly, have you, how many have you got? Five. Oh, sorry, you did just say that. Do you want to give um, Mac and Jeffrey what, two of yours, and I'll give out the rest was the four from mine, two from yours. Sure. Yep. Um, can you remember um, why you had so many rations, Giselle? Was this a specific like beast that was carved up? I can't remember. I think there was a time. Well, I'd, I had quite a few, but I had the same as Tilly. There was a time where we were like, Get your get your rations, or under- you st- you start with ten, and then you just never take it off unless specifically remembered or reminded by the DM is what's happening. <laughs> I think every time we've mentioned it, I've taken them off in the infinite library, though. Good. Yeah, I definitely did. Yeah, in there. If I start. I had fifteen. I've just said I had seven. Yeah, you've oh. been you've been gone for quite a while. Eight, but we were sharing them. We did it in the library for sure, yeah. but I only had a few. I, I went in with just... Me too. I'd had a few more on my sheet, but they were from... They were specifically from something that had happened a while ago, so I and mean, I had like a few left. Yeah, we've okay. definitely been having them off of Tilly and Giselle. They've been feeding you. Um. So uh, what do we wish to do with our time eating and resting is there anything in particular reading yeah yeah that's for sure yeah. what say seem to for, have a go on sorry okay. just for giselle if so you now with one of those books you can copy rituals is that right with, um, yeah well, i don't know if you have to go through all of the studying and stuff before you're able to copy any rituals but if you can do any now i've got some so Maybe you can copy them, or some of them. What's the DDO? Do copy, I copy, to... copy from what, though? Your, your spells are innate. No, they're, no, in, the they're in the Book of Radiance. Oh, 
Oh. The rituals are. Gotcha. That's how I do. Uh, yeah, I, you, we, we can begin the transcribing process as per, like, the wizard copying rules. Uh, so that's 50 gold pieces per spell level and a number of... Uh, is it a, is it an hour per spell? Oh, mm, I can't remember. Per spell spell slot, level, yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. Sense. I'll let so you know fifty gold got, pieces anyway. and one hour per spell level. Um, I know detect magic, but that is kind of like an innate thing. It's listed as a ritual, but obviously I can do it at will. So maybe that's it. Might be in your book as well, and it's just doubled up. But possibly, yeah. Because if it was just the feat that it was just an Elvish inv invocation, mm -hmm. I'm not sure it would be listed as a ritual. Yeah. What what about if, let's say, like, Tilly did a ritual in front of Giselle? Could she make notes of it and 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 have it like that rather than copying I would it? say not, no. Yeah. More complex. That didn't go very well when we were trying to transcribe for the uh, the lobotomization. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> what, what do you mean? It went perfectly well. <laughs> Jeffrey, uh, have some food, please. Dude. <laughs> eat, eat this, dude. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. Um, well, I've got uh, detect magic, comprehend languages, identify, unseen servant, uh, first level ones. Um, I have forbiddance, which is a big one. That's sixth level. That's the one where you cast over a huge area with gem dust and like a thousand mm. yards. And you don't want to teleport in into it. Um, <laughs> there's contact of the plane. Pretty specific to Red's book. I don't know how it'd apply to someone else learning it, but that's there as well. Um and yeah, that's that's it. So with this I you would teach me them and I put them in this book and then they become spells that I can use. As rituals, yeah. yeah. So it's not something you could cast um like in battle, but uh rituals take ten minutes plus the casting time. And so you had access to them th via the ritual, so they wouldn't use a spell slot. So yeah, it might be useful. Just depends on which one or ones you want. And it costs me fifty gold piece every 50 time. Fifty gold pieces. No, just the just to copy it into the book. Once it's in the book, it doesn't cost you anything. No, yeah, but for each ritual. Yeah. So for each. And two hours ago. Uh, for each level of the spell you want to copy in, it will be fifty gold pieces and an hour worth of time of transcribing. Do you, you might not be able to do even one depending on the level of the spell because of the time. Mm -hmm. So it might so just take a, a first or second time. level spell would be doable in yeah. this time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really bothered which. Um, I'll, I'll put my first just, level one. Yeah. already got detect magic i think identify is really cool we don't yeah. have to mither a mirror all the time about, about doing it that's good because especially if three of us can do it we can very quickly <laughs> yep. yeah 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 so i'll do identify as a ritual and okay. is that 50, is that a second, first 50 gold pieces? Yeah, it will still cost you 100 gold pieces to cast it as a ritual every time because of the specific components required. And it's, as I said, for you, it will still require the components. Because The, it's all the material one in this... Um, doesn't, doesn't consume it. Doesn't, it doesn't get consumed, but you still need a component of that value. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically you've got to get a... Pearl. Earl is worth 100 gold. But I'm then, sure there's uh, there's a pearl in those bones over there. Giselle, on the other yeah, side right, of maybe. it. <laughs> Flames from hell. <laughs> you want to rummage around? <laughs> I'm going to go rum rummage around in the dragon's horde. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm going to just take off that no, now. He's, he's still here, though. <laughs> no, it's not, it's, yeah, let's not do it. Though, so, um... Do you think he considered this his horde on this side as well, or just on the other side? I don't know if I would have tested. But there's actual dragon bones here, which means that whatever the lair here 
Uh, yeah, they're quite small for dragon bones. They could be like withens. Oh, well, or... Yeah, there you go. That makes sense. Uh, I wanted to ask. Um, I have something in my inventory that I I'm, I can't remember if I made this comment or maybe you did and went in the inventory and made this comment. But I've got a potion of greater healing, and it in the notes it says, "No longer magical, infinite library book attack." I can't uh, yeah. personally remember putting that in. Uh, yeah, no, I did it. So when you go to, yeah, when you go to drink that potion, it does not work anymore. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so you uh, might as well just delete that potion. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, using my time and playing with the book that I'm reading to see if I can revive the uh, alchemical magical properties of this potion. Ooh, um, then. Uh, yeah, we can. You can make a um, alchemist tools check. Uh, yeah. So, but the specific, the specific DC. So, um, it's an alchemical crafting one. Um, it's not a specific what, but because you've got the base components already, I'll make it as if you were, um identifying but like like neutralizing an acid you're like reinvigorating a potion so it's like a dc sure. 20 uh, right. but i'll give you advantage oh unless you well yeah i'll give you advantage so dc cool. 20. yeah advantage did it <laughs> yeah so you um you kind of add some like salt mushrooms to the potion some mushrooms and you shake it all about and yeah you reactivate it you can nice. delete that comment. It'd take I you an hour with that. that to do, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys are all fucking OP now, by the way. All of you. Um, so, yeah, something... Uh, oh, well, well, we'll deal with what everybody else wants to do, and I'll go back to the narrative kind of thing with uh, Red and Max, which we were going to do just before the books came out. Um, I just wanted to check how long I've forgotten again how long it takes to deattune and reattune to something. To deattune takes an hour. To attune takes an hour. Okay, all right. We'll spend some time doing that then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then, while everybody is reading and experimenting uh, by the dim, pale lights of this blue flame. Um, Max pulls you to one side, Red. Um, he like puts down his lute, uh, and he seems to like like shake his head when he puts his instrument down, and he kind of closes Funeral's Lament. He kind of regains a sense of clarity, um, and he looks to you, Red. Um, I didn't know Lone Spell was on the trail of the CCC. The accusations he makes against Manchun, like Manchun has power over a dragon. I, this is this is worrying. What's your take on it? Uh, it does confirm some things. When we were in Silverant's office. Uh... Adam spirit that had kind of been um, captured and um, kept under the spell of a, of a magic mask. But when we unveiled it for a moment, they'd revealed from many years ago they'd been there and they were looking for that gaunt um, and that it held power of, over Silver Run. We weren't sure at the time if since into someone else's hands or it was Silverantha that was using it and eventually Manchun had it but um, by one account what they'll said about it at the very least is true and I wonder why Manchun hasn't called upon his 
dominion over a dragon to help out the invasion of Silvercrest, the the Blood King, the horrible abyssal creature that you and some of your friends anyway dealt with. The can't remember his name. Uh, we don't. Okay. But doesn't that strike you as as odd? We're, we're here, you and I, deep in the field, risking our lives, and some cloistered scholar has got, you know, the power of a, uh, an army at his literal fingertips. Does make... Yeah, on the one hand, he could just be taking a nuanced approach and very subtly keeping Silver on check. But from what Lone Spell suggested, Silver Anth is actively involved with the, with the elves and conspiracy that would be caught up in it as well. All behind the veil, all the puppet strings kind of approach to the supposed safeguarding of Crystal Sphere had more to do with influence and political power that advantage. Well, either he's plotting something for his own end, or he's alleged with this Saruki conspiracy tied up with the elves in some kind of grubby deal, or he merely doesn't have the will to use the power at his disposal. What do you think? Do you trust him? No, I don't, I don't trust him. Absolutely. Less and less, the more time goes. In fact, I do know that he's he's scared and he, he's on the run. I um I saw in his in a vision in his in his dream, he was being chased down by clones of himself. They were wrestling for the power of the gauntlet. And I don't know if anybody's caught you up, but apparently there's a whole bunch of parallel dimensions where there's like a Max over there and then a different Max and there's like a bunch of Freddies that crossed over and this other girl, Tisha or Tasha or some. It gets real complex, but there's like at least eight Manchoons out there and he seems to think or is afraid that they're all coming after him and one of them wants the gauntlet. Oh, so you don't think they're clones like Lone Spell said? He said he was a clone. You think that it's actual other Manchoons from other realities? Well, I only saw what was in his dream, but normally when I use that spell, um, I can cast the effects in the dream and I'm in control of them. Um, I guess maybe it's just that with his power uh, being so strong that he was able to influence it and those are just his fears or... Whether it was I don't know, an echo of the real alternate Manchoons. Hmm. I don't know anything about alternate dimensions or anything like that, but I, I don't wish... Uh, I know you've been on the curator assignment for, well, the best part of a year or so now, maybe more. And I know that's that's why I'm on board. I have this funeral event. We need to go to Pandemonium, but if only we had more resources. Keep an eye on Manchun, maybe locate this gauntlet. I think that has to be our mission if we make it back from Pandemonium. Yeah. Find out how we can trust at least. Difficult. I kind of feel like now that this looming actual threat is bearing down upon us, um, 
what do we do with the uh what do we do with the conspiracy with the secret of the PC? How do we want it to unfold before Endar comes crashing down and splits the whole thing wide open in a way? Well the CCC need to step up and they need to if any if they've got any arsenal behind the curtain, any weapons in the shadows, they need to bring them out. It may be that we're on the brink of war with these elves. Not the settlement wars, but the Saruki wars. Why do they all might be caught up in the Saruk conspiracy? What does that say about the other two? They keep secrets from each other? The my handler is not Manchun. He and I have never had a one-to-one -one dealing. My handler was alas for Silverhand. Obviously, that's confidential. But she didn't seem to like Manchun at all. I don't know really if the CCC is three. Commanders working together, or three commanders with their own agendas. There's a lot of paranoia, a lot of fear. When the third one knew that I was based out of Silvercrest, he never even took his hood off. I never even saw his face. He never spoke. I could sense that he was scared. to think of or it all comes okay, but ready what do you mean secrets that you let out to seem light of day or we're potentially all plunged into absolute everlasting darkness it's yeah, we shouldn't leave anything on the table. Whatever weapons, whatever truth, whatever power we can wield, we'll need to bring it to bear on this, whatever Dendar is. Something like a snake that eats nightmares? Is that what he said? Oh, I could write a song about this. <laughs> oh, God, please don't. <laughs> oh, anyway, you've done some great work. You've got stronger resolve than I have. I just hope I can get us through this place described in this book, Pandemonium. This place that drove Hector mad. Speaking of which, where is Hector? Oh, he's in this bottle. What? Yeah, for safekeeping. Oh, I fear you might have to unleash him before our mission is over. Just let me know before you open that bottle. He, he and all of his shadowy, evil Hector's Hit pretty hard. Yeah, we'll do it somewhere. And bad with the questions. Smart. Okay, if we're really sleeping in this fucking bone pit. Then I'm going to find the comfiest looking wooden skull I can find. They've been in the bone pit. Yeah, it gets a little bone xylophone going. 
Um, okay, we'll reconvene. Mm -hmm. And continuing on from that thread, I'll speak to Mir. It's not private, you two can hear as well. And ask, remind me again. Where, alas, alas, for silver hand, you. Interesting. What do you mean? Where she fits in for me? Who, who, who is she to you? Like, like, just, <laughs> just, I just revive the story. Just reignite <laughs> the embers. <laughs> alas, for silver hand was married to Madani, who is Madani Silverhand, who is Mir's father. She is also one of the seven daughters of Mistra. And Mir believes her to be dead, or believed her to be dead, but has recently found out that she's not. We think that the heads of the CCC might be different in their own interests and intentions. And we don't know who to trust or where Manchun fits in with the other two. But Silverhand is a daughter of Mistra, then maybe you can uh maybe you can commune with Mistra and, you know is she is she still true of heart? Does she still fight the right cause? I mean, if she really is, you know, on Mistra's side and and in her team, then we can bank on her because you know Mistra's got to be on our side, right? <laughs> he doesn't want Dendar to eat the world. I hope not. I don't think so. She's in trouble if the world gets eaten. So if Mr. Vouches for Silverhand, then that makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Is there a way that I could speak to Alasra herself? Uh, well, when I... My handler was Manchun, basically. Um, so I don't know how we'd go about getting in touch with her directly, certainly not privately. But we're pretty, you know, we've got we're a resourceful bunch. But we could figure something out, yeah. I'm just, I'm just wondering if, you know, as far as Mistra knows, she as silver hand, you know, um, blown from the flock as she like, you know, abandoned the vows or any of that kind of stuff. Uh huh. Because if Mistress says she's good, then as far as I'm concerned, she's good, and we can ask her everything we need to ask her and do everything we need to do to get her help. Maybe find Manchun and the gauntlet. I get it. Uh, that is something I can do uh, tomorrow. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a worthwhile conversation. You have to do it right now. Mm. I agree. It would be sensible to see if there's at least one way into the CCC that we can trust. And the other hey, one, did I tell you about him? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, Max did, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, Max spilled the beans already. That... Can we tell Freddy? I mean, you know, if Dendar's going to eat the world, then at least tell Freddy. 
that his father still lives mm -hmm. behind the shadows. I kind, I kind of knew, but I didn't know where he was, and I did, did try to tell Freddy, but he he didn't really want to hear it. He's not in a good way, obviously. <laughs> uh, but with more information about where Reginald is, has been. We can see. We can see how he is. I mean, we this could always, like, leave him a letter and you know, just open it if Dendark shows up and tries to eat the world. <laughs> I just thought it'd be so dramatic and it would have so much flair if we could tell him that his father is still alive. Mm. I agree. What were you going to say, Tisha? Oh, Tisha? Giselle? Uh, I was just, I was just thinking about this Freddy guy. Oh, uh, whoops. Uh, and, um... So obviously his missus has gone off and whatever. His dad <laughs> was like dead but not dead. And his, I think his mum potentially is a vampire. Do I know that? I think I know that. Kind of worse than a vampire. But I just feel yeah. really sorry for the kid is, is, is where I was going. I was just being emotional, thinking about how it would be to have all those things going on at the same time. Yeah. We all feel sorry for him. Hmm. So he should know. Worry yeah. about him. He should know what's going on. Is what I was thinking. Also, I did have a thought, and then Giselle gets out her genie bottle and says, "You know, when I go into here, or you know, um, the Great Commune, I could see what was going on. Just wondered, Red, with your flask, whether he knows. Just something to be aware of. <laughs> something to consider when he. I don't gets believe released. it works like that. Okay. Red doesn't really know. <laughs> um, remaining there until released, hold one creature. They don't need to eat or drink. They doesn't say. Mm. That's correct. But if he can, he could hear all our conversations. But I don't know if that's a problem or not. Oh yeah, so that that's a, but that's a good point though. Like. Um, we could probably do a deciding where do we, where do we let him out? Where do we ask him questions like who's gonna safeguard him? He can't be, he can't be let go wherever we. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it's maybe not for now, but I think on. Mm -hmm. Do we want to? Do we want to know from him? Well, I think the, there was a pressing bit that was relating to where our books are. That's solved now, right? Because we, yeah, uh, so we don't need that. Um, maybe he knows about the curator's museum. Maybe what's there? What sort of defenses or layout monsters how to defeat him yeah that's um uh, that's probably wishful thinking but yeah um something now i'm wondering if he ever even really met the curator or went anywhere near his yeah mm. Apparently, Hector was answering the end death over here, and by extension, own spell up there. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good point. Um, you can't talk to it whilst it's in the flask, right? So what? Yeah, when we release it, and that's it. We've got that one hour, and then. So if he didn't, look, I'm just thinking, if he didn't make a deal with the curator, but instead with Lone Spell, now we have a truce with Lone Spell. So sort of like his master be like, we call him out. We say like, 
we we spoke to Lone Spell. We spoke to the dragon. We're we're cool beans with both, right? <laughs> so you don't have to be our enemy anymore. Um, tell us whatever you can about the curator or pandemonium that you know, and then after that we'll let you go, and then you can go and try rebuild what's left of your life. Whatever. That's what I would have done anyway. That's that's what I'm thinking. Or not, you know, there's not much enthusiasm for this idea, but um, <laughs> we, you could just leave him in the flask for, you know, to stew for a bit, let him out after the, uh, we saved the end of the world or whatever. No, no, we'll, we'll let him out. It creeps me out keeping him hanging around in there. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as you ponder which... Uh, threads to tug on and what uh, what order to accomplish which of your goals and how to go about them uh, the compulsion to rest begins to set in as you finish uh, reading what tomes uh, you've been reading and discussing what things you have been talking about um, and you can all take a long rest um, assuming that nobody wants to go and watch <laughs> Swap an attunement. Leave it in the hands so, of fate at this point. <laughs> fuck it. We're so, in the so. dragon's lair filled with bones. <laughs> we just met the, the lich and the fucking undead dragon. I'm going to bed. So I was uh the this whole time the um um in the library uh, for you know uh, specific reasons. Uh, I didn't have my flying, flaming otter out. Uh, it kept him out of that whole situation. But I think maybe now is the time that we're not in the library anymore, right? So we're not bound by those rules. So I think 12... Um, I think 12 will come out. By the way, I found like a really cool image for 12. Yes. Cool. <laughs> it is, Elemental it? otter. <laughs> <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll um, take him out and and uh, ask him to um, you know keep an eye on uh, our sleeping uh, group and and let me know if there's any problems and let, tell him that we're. Um, yeah, we're coming close to um, visiting visiting the source of my um, my predicament. Mm -hmm. um, so things might, you know, things might change. So I'm counting on his guidance and help. Yeah, he um, he doesn't stray too far from you. Um, Twelve seems quite. Um, anxious in this environment filled with bones um, but he uh, what you wouldn't see while you're asleep is he maintains a fairly um, strict perimeter um, he thinks about waking you up a couple of times when he hears spooky noises and thinks he sees some of the bones moving but none of the <laughs> threats persist long enough for him to uh, raise the alarm very cool. Um, yeah. You wake. Um, the temperature uh, really drops in this room, in this kind of lightless space. Uh, I want you all just to make a constitution saving throw. Um, Tilly, I will give you advantage because of your flaming otter. He would probably stay closer to you than anybody else. Yeah. Then you are all fine. You wake up and you felt the cold in the night, but you're not suffering any long-term effects. Um, 
Jeffrey seems particularly cold and um, kind oh, of shivering. No. Jeffrey. Um, yeah. Um, Max seems to be holding it together, but uh, he like urgently goes over to Mia. Um, you, you're the one who cast the teleportation to get us in here, right? Yeah. Well, we need to get the fuck out of here. It's freezing. Okay. And I'll start doing it. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh, okay, I mean, I mean, that was Max being a dick, as he would be. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you're casting Teleportation Circle, where are you transporting everybody to? Crest. Our Lady Weaver of Stars. Yeah, pretentious. Pretentious vanity project. Pretentious <laughs> vanity project. <laughs> yeah, I've got an idea about like a big ice sculpture in the shape of me. In front yes. of it. I want it to yes. like sparkle every hour. Yeah. <laughs> what <a> twat. <laughs> Can't wait to kill him. Okay. Um, Silvercrest. Goodness me, uh, where are those maps? It's been a while. Um, yeah, I think I need to like move these maps out of folders to use them in this new place. Uh, let's see. Um, Hmm. Uh, this is just roll 20 newfangled mechanics. Just delay me by a second. If we get back and there's just n- <laughs> no one, then a sign of it. There's just a big fucking snake in the middle of Silvercrest. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I don't want that. That's not what I want here. Um, yeah, I'm struggling here uh, to take you into a map that's in a folder. Surely you should be able to do that. Oh, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. It works. Oh, this is our Silvercrest map. I'm not sure it's the most up-to-date one, but you get the idea. Beautiful. Partly on fire, but it's mostly fine. Mm. (laughs) 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 Lightly singed at the edges. Slightly on fire, but it's fine. The armies are still out on the... I think it was like the winter one we used last. Yeah. I I can't even see. In fact, fuck it. Hold on. Where's the season <laughs> now? <laughs> Fucking knows, man. <laughs> we we've been gone for years. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh yeah, let's just go to the Church of Our Lady Weaver of Stars. This is a nice map, isn't it? It's not. It's the one actually from the water plane, but uh, you get the idea. Um, See anything? I got a graphic yeah. performance warning. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. just performance it's warning. Just black screen for me. A black screen black. for me too. It said loading and. I oh, fucked it, lads. Too powerful. <laughs> Dan served us with an 8K picture. Killed our PC. Has <laughs> it popped in for you all yet? No. 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 Oh, fuck's sake. Black screen, then. <laughs> um, maybe refresh the page? Yeah. If no one can see it, that's bad. Uh, 
We've detected that you may be using an unsupported system or browser. Or that the Ooh. hardware acceleration may be disabled due to a setting in your browser. Oh, see. Graphics performance enough. notification. Oh, okay. Yes. I don't get that. I, I do still get just a... It, it looks like a fog of war is enabled on it. Yeah. Ah, just okay. a black screen. Okay. We'll see about that. Let me go on to the settings. Oh, shit. No. Sorry. <laughs> uh, dynamic lighting. <gasps> Let's try that. Yay! Yay! Hey, nice. Got it. <laughs> Why is dynamic lighting on that page? How weird. Um, Secrets. Yeah. Nifty brush touch. Um, okay. So uh, you emerge in the... Um, antechamber off the main hall of the uh, Church of Our Lady, Weaver of Stars. This is the one with the statue and the Fountain of Midnight in it, um, uh, where the teleportation circle uh, was initially made. Uh, the um, Yeah, uh, the warm winds are like um, kind of flowing through the temple. Um, those of you who are profici proficient in nature would probably realize that it's getting towards uh, autumn time. Cool. Um, so, yeah, there's like the threat of cold on the wind, but it's not quite taken hold. Um, you hear the running water of the fountain in this antechamber, uh, but uh, nobody is here other than you having manifested from beyond the planes. We'll do it. <laughs> hmm. No, no, no. It's fine. Hello? Hello? Um, nobody seems to be within earshot. Huh. Is it bedtime? Okay. People in bed? Uh, it's hard to see. Is it? None of you have a timekeeping device? No. I'll go to the door. Close the door and open it into uh, the main hall of the Church of Our Lady. Um. And the main hall seems empty. Why? Did you predict fate, Red? Why? Do that in the dreams, power. but do you have the power to do it in reality? <laughs> there's, there's normally like people here, right? Mm -hmm. Ah. <laughs> Is this one where you've got your sister? Wait, not your sister. The it's double of really. you. <laughs> yeah. It's complicated. She doesn't. I'm no. fine. Okay. <laughs> fine. Um. No, no, no feelings. No. There is, uh, as you walk into the main hall, what what stained glass windows there are, um, are, uh, showing that the it is, uh, it looks like night time. It's quite yeah. dimly lit. Some braziers are out. Some are dimly lit. Okay. Um, I will. Want... Oh, go on. It was just a quick FYI for DM. I've equipped the amulet of against protection. Okay. Uh, and I was just going to ask if Max already has one. So I kind of think maybe he would, but I'm not. Yeah, sure. he does have one. Mm -hmm. Going to have such a massive. Jet lag, because we just woke up, but we're coming back in the middle of the night. Mm. We're we're gonna be out of sorts now. Uh, let's um find someone. Huh? Where are we going? Uh, I'll try the like sleeping quarters. Uh, you run upstairs. Calling out. 
Hello, hello. You check a few doors. Kitchen's empty. Um, you look in some of the uh, dormitories, um, and it looks like you know there's dishevelled beds and clothes, um, kind of left to fall where they may. Whether someone's been particularly untidy or left in a rush, or whether the place has been ransacked, you don't know. Any clues as to how long people have been away? You can make an investigation check if you want. Yeah. A six! No fucking idea. Place is a mess. You can't believe that uh, Narlo and Balzax and all the other attendees have left it in such a state. If that is indeed what's happened, I will cast sending to Valzax. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, it's me. I'm at the temple, but it's empty. Where are you? Are you okay? Are you safe? A few seconds go by. Oh, Mia, you're back. Awesome. Um, if you're in the temple, then you probably want to come step outside. Mm. <laughs> okay. I'll go and do that with everybody. What? You guys all have 14 temp HP, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll need sure it. Say that now. <laughs> Maybe we will need it. <laughs> All right, let's get ready. Um, you steal yourselves for whatever surprise might be to come. Um, and uh, as you uh, fling open the main temple door, you see the majority of the temple staff um, either in awe looking up at the sky or consoling panicked uh, civilians who are who have rushed to the temple seeking some kind of answer. What's up in the sky? Um, as you look up, um, you can see uh, the moon looming large over the bay of Silvercrest. Uh, and it is uh, eclipsing the sun, bathing the whole night sky in this twilight eclipse. Uh, anyone with a, a proficiency in nature? Again, I can give you a nature check. Whether it's natural mm -hmm. or not Guidance. so much. <laughs> Oh, it's probably not going to help much. Ah, 14, better than 10. With a 14, um, yeah, this is not normal. Everyone, this is absolutely not normal. I looked at it, and it's not. <laughs> Why is it not normal? Isn't Eclipse a normal thing? No, no, I check my Eclipse calendar. I always have it with me. Oh, okay. And there isn't one for another five years or so. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. And not so, expected. It's not no. in the diary, everyone. No. Not in the Some, calendar. Something is wrong. It's an omen. We're all doomed. <laughs> doomed. Um, doomed. I'll shout there... for Valzax. Yeah. Uh, you can see uh, Valzak turns and waves as he's got his like sizable arm around a civilian who seems to be just tearful and scared. Hey, what is he kind happening? Of, kind of holds his hand up, says, "Don't worry." The Lady of Mysteries is sends things like this to question, for us to question. We'll work it out. We well, don't worry. And she kind of like puts a, 
pats her head on the civilian and kind of smiles through a grimace at you and turns around. Hi. Uh, sorry. Um, we don't usually get this many people uh, turning up at the temple at this time of night. Uh, but when we st- when the bangs on the door started getting louder, we had to come out and see what was happening. Mm. So it's wait, eclipsing the it sun, is but it's night. Uh, yeah, it's been this way for hours now. It's not moving. <sighs> Did anything happen? We don't know. We don't even know what t- what time is it. Are Nobody just... seems to know. If only there was still a clock tower in the middle of town. Damn it, we destroyed it. <laughs> the Oster. Well, I did it. The Oster. <laughs> 200 sessions later. Yeah. People are starting to now whisper that like, maybe Yostin was right. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of similar thing happened in Crystal Spear, but not exactly. But everything went dark for Red. days as well, right? Went red, didn't it? Wasn't that the? Yeah, we only just fixed that. We no. only just fixed that, and there was oh my god! You step away for five minutes to get some books. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't know, like, kind of in a hushed voice, like you think. What Lone Spell said, like this, this soon already. I thought be. we had more time. He made it sound like. Um, Falzak says you've been gone for so long where have you been Uh, here and there college (laughs) wait wait Uh, how long do you think we've been gone for gosh I haven't seen you since well, not the summer just gone, the summer before that. What? Wait. That's... <sighs> okay. I tried to contact you uh, a few, in, quite a few In days, times. in days or months. How, how long ago? Oh, it might be like... 400 days. Over a year? Y- yeah. When I was the last time? You popped back briefly, uh well, was so long ago. Okay, I honestly as a player don't even remember when we've been here last, but um I remember Giselle coming back for a brief moment. But, but the thing he said the yeah. First yeah, we, spoke, we did like, someone yeah. spoke to Valzax not long before we went to the library, I know that. But the thing we said, the thing he said about the summit, is that does that is, are we are we thinking about it correctly? Because there was one that smoke was going to, right? It doesn't. Oh, mean... you're talking about the Tabaxi clan meeting? Uh huh. Oh yeah, that will have happened. There, there may have been two more subsequent meetings by now. Okay, hold on. Can you tell me what day it is? in like calendar because we do calendars because we're smart people so which day of the month it is day month and year please um i don't know i just rolled for how long you'd been in the library um Oof. so i'd have to work it out uh, I, I, you you don't have to do it now i'm just I'm saying scared. like comparing to what he says valzax and comparing what we think it is is there that e- discrepancy of and and what is it i'm sorry it he thinks that he, he hasn't seen you in over a year like a year and a month yeah i think i think what i'm asking is whether whether our time perception what i th- what we think the day of the month and the year is oh. is it different to what he thinks was there a time lapse well, for you, us you... 
Oh, oh yeah, you went into the infinite library and you were told multiple times that time works differently in the infinite. Yeah, library. no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm starting to realize that now. <laughs> I'm just trying to establish what the. So we kind of felt is. like it was maybe what seven or ten days ish, something like that, off mm -hmm. about how yeah. many rests we had. Yeah. We did the forward so, and back thing, mm -hmm. but you know, we were it's expecting it to be year. like a couple of weeks tops. Yes, yeah. but he's saying a year. Uh -huh. Do I look like I've aged? <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, okay. Grey hairs, wrinkles. And this has just started, this has just happened today. Yeah, like, it's so weird that you would turn up at this same time that this would happen. Is, it, is this something that you've done? Maybe. Maybe it'll go away. Maybe it's just a, a temporary thing. Maybe it's just an omen and it's not, well, I don't know. Like, Shah coming to kick Saloon's ass? I don't know. What's happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. If the okay. moon doesn't move, it'll affect the tides and then we'll all drown. We need, we need Thanks, to know what Giselle. happened. We, oh, sorry. That was, that was very... Geography <laughs> book. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell them their jokes. <laughs> we need to know, we oh. need to find out what happened in the time that we were gone. I gotta oh. go and check on my temple. <laughs> um, you have a temple? Hopefully. <laughs> oh. In crystal spheres, yeah, that's it. Um, well, uh, just be careful. Tensions have been pretty high over the past year or so. Um, we've seen a decreased trade with Inelian. Um, basically, a lot of the elven lands, Menelambia, kind of pulled up the drawbridge. It's like they're circling the wagons that they're shutting up shop. There's stoked a lot of anti-elven hatred. Did smoke come back in that year at all? I haven't seen him. Okay. I wonder what you've been up to. <laughs> well, I bet we'll find out sooner or later. Um, uh, I I got to try and get to the halls of the Stone Chorus. Does anyone want to come? Yeah. Uh... I think I should stay here. I mean, I does, that, does that hold on a second? Is this thing does this thing change what we were planning to do? I mean, the end of the world is kind of like you know on the doorstep now, rather than in some unspecified future. God, I I, I, I just I have to I have to find out if anyone's still at the halls of the door or sign I need to to go there. Do you have uh, do you have method to get to getting there? Yeah, yeah, I can. Mind if I use your teleportation circle back in the temple? <laughs> uh, do, 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 run in there. I can come back or cast sending on me, or, or come with me if you want. I don't know, but I'm running to the teleportation. I'll go with. I don't think we should really split, but I'll. I'll if Mir's staying, I'm going to stay with her. We can we can come back. Okay, just be uh, safe. I'm gonna go and check it out. Cast stations. Okay. Uh, 
Um, is the teleportation circle you're returning to in the Hall of the Dawn Chorus? I built, I, unless I remember incorrectly, there's one in the back, kind of, there. Mm -hmm. I copied before we last left there. You, um, with Giselle, appear in the, yeah, it's like the basement of mm -hmm. this cathedral. Um, it is uh, quiet, dusty. The cabinet where the blood of Lathander was retrieved from is still there. It looks relatively untouched. Like someone's not, no one's been down here in a while. You are zapped alongside Giselle as you take in this site. Right, let's let's go. Oh, we, we can't going? tell if, if it's dark in down here. We gotta run upstairs. Oh, it's go set. Okay, all right. Probably just dark in here anyway. It's fine. Yes. It's probably just a silver class yeah. thing. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, each of you make a perception check. Giselle and Brad. Okay. Um, Red, you're rushing up the stairs. Giselle, um, it's been a while since you were here, but oddly, mm -hmm. things look more or less exactly the same. Um, there's just something oddly quiet, and you start to get a sinking feeling with that perception check. Um, Red, you come up the stairs into the back room where uh, you would you normally expect to see a uh, you know the dormitories and the offices and the kind of like the back of the temple where you spent many hours doing research back in the day. Um, Giselle, with that perception check, I'm going to get you to make an Arcana check. Hmm. Hmm. You look around. What's? What is it? There's something wrong here. Uh, red. There's nobody here. It's dark up here. Similar level of dusk level darkness to uh, Silvercrest, where you just came from. But yeah, there's nobody here. Red, I've got a bad feeling about this. Should we step outside? Yep. Do. As you open the door, you go into the main hallway of the Hall of the Dawn Chorus, where the worshipping and uh, everything would happen. You see empty pews, uh, but as you step into the main hall, you activate a spell. And you hear a voice. I don't know where you are or where you've gone. But I enjoy drinking the blood of every single one of your worshippers. Kept me sated for some time. I'm sure I'll catch you soon. Ta-ta! Did we both hear that? I just read. Uh, no, you both hear it. What the? If you've never seen a tea flame turn pale before, uh, that that's it. You you they've gone. She's got them all. Uh, did I recognise oh. the voices, Lucretia? You did. Just checking. 
Uh, oh no. <laughs> um, Remember that threat uh, you told us about? <laughs> uh, I'll start sort of frantically looking around, and now I'm looking for signs of a struggle. Uh, I'll give you an investigation check at advantage. Now you've got a clue as to what's happened. Mm. Yeah, with an 18, uh, you can now see blood stains on the pews. You can see uh, scratch marks and sign of a scuffle. Uh, you can see windows that have since been boarded up after presumably an investigation took place. Um, as you uh, go over to the main door, uh, given the state of disrepair and with nobody to look after it in it, what is many, many months, uh, the Hall of the Dawn Chorus has been condemned um, and is off limits. Oh, I'm sorry, Red. I think Red would just fall to her knees hopelessly. Um, I, I don't know how to make this situation better. Do you think? Got to be a dream, right? Dream, yeah. Or we have to go back in time and fix it somehow. I can do The Infinite <sighs> Library can. Uh... I would just turn around, just one day, we, like we've got to see outside. I just. Go for yeah. the door. Um, you uh, unbar the door from the inside. Uh, just make an athletics check for me, Red. Yeah. Um, you wrench the door open, emotional, as uh, some two-by-fours that were nailed to the front fall to the ground. Uh, you step out and you can see this same eclipse. And here on this side of the continent, it looks as though people are only just realizing that this is happening. And people are emerging from nearby buildings, looking up and they're dressed in, um, you know, some of them still in night clothes. They're expecting to see the sun rise. They're expecting to see the dawn over the fields of the surrounding area, but this dawn is obscured by darkness. Is is any is anyone saying this just happened last year? <laughs> mm -hmm. Damn it! Um, as you pull the door open, um, you see. Um, somebody in the overgrown grass outside the Halls of Dawn Chorus kind of shuffle. They seem to be cloaked um, and they start running. I, as soon as I catch sight of the suspicious figure, I'll try to cast Dom. Sure. That's fuck. Hmm. Uh, they fail their wisdom save. I just, with, with Bell even turning to properly look at them, I just like march them in front of me and make them pull mm. the hood down. As they march powerlessly to resist in front of you, they stand, they look up, and they pull their hood down. And you see someone who you recognize, a pale, gaunt version of someone you recognize, with yellow cat-like eyes and fangs protruding over their bottom lips. You see the bard, Giovanni, stood looking at you. 
being dominated, they say nothing. Speak. Red. Is that you? Why are you... Why are you cloaked? What did you do? I must hide from the sun. It usually comes out this time of day. Oh no. Tell me why you have to hide from the sun, Giovanni. Where were you, Red? Your congregation needed you. Uh, I think just as the tears well up in her eyes, she just dismisses the spell. Um, you as as you let the spell go, this anger towards you, these questions, you abandoned us. You left us with her. I want you to roll initiative. Fuck. Uh, let me just use this. <laughs> uh, Giselle, you can do the same if you wish. Just There's only going to be three of us here, so we don't need to do the turn order. Fuck. Um. <laughs> Do you remember, guys, when I said, like, will one day make a difference? You know what I mean? <laughs> do, do, you remember, do you still remember when I said that? <laughs> World still needs heroes. Uh, okay. Um, let me just... Have I got... A, yeah. uh, I rolled a 20 on initiative. Let me just... Okay. Um, this version of Giovanni lunges towards you. Um, he makes um, a uh, unarmed strike, uh, which he will be a twenty-eight to hit. Uh, you need to make a. Uh, acrobatics or athletics check uh, as they go to grab you. I think just voluntarily fail it. Right. Okay. To avoid the... Take five bludgeoning damage. Um, at that point, uh, he bears his fangs and he goes to bite you. Mm. Um, a 12 to hit. Just hits. Just hits? Yeah. Uh, okay. Then I need you um, to take... Hold on. Uh, sorry, the would you say, given that you willingly failed the saving throw, are you a willing creature? Or not? It's up to you. I think that I was not feeling that I could resist to his, to his lashing out and attacking of me. Mm -hmm. But suddenly thinking about an actual bite, like I'm not willing to succumb to a vampire's bite, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Uh, okay, then you merely take the damage. Uh, that's seven pier... Uh, no, sorry, I've rolled it on the thing. It's nine piercing and 11 necrotic, but it doesn't kind of latch onto you, it just <laughs> bites you. Okay. Um, okay. 
Uh, and that is the end of uh, Giovanni's turn. Uh, it is uh, right. your go next, Red. Uh, I think she just kind of struggles and tries to will at best the whisper out of her mouth, I'm sorry, and can't even look him in the eye. She's just going to cast Sunburst above her, 60 feet, and just try and light up the area and look at it. And Okay. Uh, let me put the actual description up. First time I'm using it, it's from the book. Okay. Um, he has to make a con save, which he fails. Got a seven. Um, doing that amount of radiant damage, uh, he's like he like pushes himself off you, and uh, he's like flailing. It seems as though he was already in like a weakened state, um, and he he's like trying to shield himself. Uh, and he runs, he makes his way for, uh, like, the high wall uh, uh, towards the kind of exterior um, exit of the halls of the, uh, the Dawn Chorus. And as he's running, uh, he sets on fire. Um, and he barely gets to the uh, doorway before uh, the skin burns off his bones and he turns to ash. Um, nice. Not in character, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was severely weakened vampire. Um, and as, just as you see him, like, his, his, like, his skin uh, burning off his bones, he turns back to look at you, and there is a... There's a, a flicker of emotion, of sadness in his eye before <laughs> he's cast into fire and ash. Red, I'm so sorry. I don't. This is what we're going to expect, I think. Is anybody still around? Just kind of reel off in celestial prayer for Giovanni. Um yeah, the it, it like I say, the, the gardens around the temple seem uh overgrown. Uh you can see like tributes and uh like a collection on the doorstep, uh kind of outside of the main door, like just to the left of where you came out. Uh it's got like um a fairly um depleted collection of gold pieces. Um, rotten food, mm. um, charitable donations left weeks or months ago. People here still care clearly about Lathander and the Dawn Lord, but for now, what might be more obvious reasons, they've been staying away. Um, yes, I just kind of slightly grabbed Giselle by the hand and just like walk, walk out, try to go and have a look in town further away from the temple. Yeah. Um, as you walk around, bear with me, I'll just, uh, Myself reacquainted. Um, you walk around the. Uh, if you go to the right, you go in town. You walk towards Summervale. Mm -hmm. um, it's an area that you're familiar with. Beyond, uh, on the other side of Summervale, you know the Sood very well, uh, where your old shop. Uh, it is or was. 
um, as you're walking through the streets of Somervale, uh, there are these people emerging from their houses going, uh, what the hell is going on? And then, yeah, somebody does say to the other one, wait a minute, didn't this happen last year? Um, and they are, uh, you know, there's, there's some indignance, there's some skepticism, there's some awe, there's some wonder, and there's some fear. But that is what everybody is talking about as they are emerging uh, at what you figure to be like the early morning. Do you think the professor at the school would still be? They might be able to tell us some stuff if he's still around. If he's still there. Sun, Sunhold? Yeah. School of Sorcery? School of Somervale? Yeah. Somervale School of Sorcery. There we go. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're heading for the School of Sorcery? Hold on. Yeah. Uh, let me get my notes. Okay. Um, you uh, happen upon uh, the Somervale School of Sorcery. Um, it looks uh, intact. Uh, the doors are closed. Um, but yeah, do you knock on? Yeah. Um, as you knock on and wait a few moments, you hear um, movement on the other side. Um, you hear a sequence of locks being seen too, and as the door is pulled, it's stopped for going much further than a few inches by a chain. Who is it? Is that you? Did you did you call him by his name then? It's cut yeah. out of it. What Clethis Olaracas. Yeah. Yes, this is Clethis. It's it, dark. It, it's Who needs Giselle, me? It's Giselle. I don't know if you remember. Came with Marius and Mia and everybody. And we've got Red here as well. Yes, yes. Yes, I remember. Come in. And he unlocks the chain and uh, he leads you uh, into his corridor. A timely arrival. What the hell is going on? going to ask you the same thing. Uh, we, we've just got here. Um, Red, do you want to ask anything? <laughs> just pretty yeah, blank face. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We, yeah. You look we, like you've seen a ghost. Please sit down. I need something strong to drink there, Red. Um, we've just been to the Hall of the Dawn Chorus, kind of figured out what's gone on, and we just want to know what's what's happened. And, and obviously, the moon, we're not really sure. We don't know what's going on. Do you know anything? <sighs> There have been rumours about the halls, the Dawn Chorus. I, given our previous exchanges, I went to keep an eye on it, but it was a crime scene uh, a few months ago, uh, just after Marius disappeared. The, the Red Knights, they, they wouldn't let anybody in. Uh, and there's an investigation going on now, but I don't think the, I don't know. Do you think that has anything to do with this? It was months ago. Has anything strange happened since? There's been a lot more red nights on the streets. Uh, not many shipments coming in from across Crystal Bay. A lot of anti-elven sentiment. Hmm. 
We don't know if this is their doing. Some kind of diplomatic fallout. The Madani Silverhand's been gone. The council struggled to function and to replace him. Politically, it's been difficult. Taxes have had to go up. Trade has been bad. People can barely afford magical components. The School of Sorcery seemed but a luxury. I was thinking about trying to return back to Sunhold. How have you survived? Oh. I've foregone more expensive spell components and I still have friends in the Sood who are willing to support me in hard times. Although many of the produce that we're used to getting from the Green Peninsula is old or spoiled. This is a real hard time. Trust you and Red to turn up again just when Crystal Spear needs you. I mean, I'm going to say it to say it to him sort of quietly. But do you think do you think anybody survived from the temple? There are accusations that the Butcher of Bayside had returned and he made his way up to Summervale with with Marius disappeared. He was not there to defend himself. Devotion is gone. Redemption is gone. Nothing but rumour and accusations spread in their place. this strange phenomena. I'm not sure if it's just a bad omen or it's an indication of something worse yet to come. That's exactly what they're thinking over at Silvercrest right now as well. Um, Red, what, what do you want to do? Uh, there's not much left for us here. Uh, we should we should go back. We should go back to Mira and Tilly. Okay. I feel like we're needed everywhere that can see this moon right now. Yeah. Let's just get back together. There's a magic circle here at the at the school. Yeah, I remember it. You, you don't actually need to go to a magic circle to cast magic circle. You just need the destination. Oh, true. Yeah, 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 yeah good true. point. Is it instant if you use a circle though? It only takes a minute anyway, but I don't think I don't think there's anything in the spell that says use the circle as a source it's only talking about destinations yeah no it's just more of a just a damn question like query yeah. wherever there's room clethis says is there anything i can do uh what do you know about vampires Quite a lot, thanks to Marius. Uh, what about... Tended not to... Oh, go on. The biggest, baddest bitch of a vampire. Mm. Thought, I thought that was the Blood King. I thought he was vanquished. His, his whole place was destroyed, remember? You were there. Well... Yes. Uh, well, we didn't quite get all of his family, did we? 
It's got has some cousins and shit. I know. Just, yeah. um, got away. I was just hoping that I can just communicate the absolute despair and the not accepting any other possibility than um, accepting my request. I, I I need all of your notes. I wanna I wanna take every note he's got on vampires, anything he's got. I'm hoping my despair will be enough to plead with him that he'll hand over enough information. Uh, I'll give you a persuasion check at advantage. Twenty-seven. Okay. Uh, before Marius left, he said that he had helped with the re-consecration of the Temple of Kelimvor, the house of the, uh, what was it called? Ascension? That's a good question. No, the House of Ascension is the, is the Raven, Raven Queen Prince. one. Uh, Trying to find it in my notes. Oh, the Church of the Reevaluation. That's right. He, even though he claimed the God of Death had abandoned that place, he managed to rid it of its infiltrators and help contribute to its restoration. Upon recovering what artifacts he could, from the rubble in the church of the reevaluation, he found this. He said it was too dangerous to keep close to him, and he asked me to look after it. Um, and he hands you, um, what looks like a club. Uh, but it's a thigh bone. <gasps> Um, hold on. Um, he did mention that it may be of significance to the church and maybe it was once stolen from the halls of the dawn chorus uh, you can add saint markovia's thigh bone to your inventory <laughs> nice <laughs> that's from strad <laughs> uh-huh Uh, what was the spelling, sorry? Uh, Starts with Saint, I just did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I got it. Uh, yeah. There you go. I think it's a bone you can, I can beat Lucretia with. <laughs> yeah, Giselle's going to say that. Wait, so you can, it's a weapon? Um, I'd beat her to death with it if, <laughs> if that was <laughs> nearly as deserving to her as what I actually have planned. <gasps> um, uh, basically, if you use this to coup de gras a vampire, it and the vampire are destroyed. Nice. 
So no Misty, no Resurrections. No. Just dead. Dead. <sighs> now, above the table, I would like to try, and this doesn't necessarily achieve it, but I, I need to try and learn or get an educated guess at how many hit die Lucretia would have. <laughs> Why is this? It's specifically uh, relating to a spell. And you need to calculate that in order to have a good enough component. But I could also just pay as much as I can and go over, but I need to try and get an understanding. Mm. But again, if this doesn't do it, it's just a longer term plan anyway, but Um, hold on. So you, you need to try and figure out basically what level she is. I guess so. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly yeah, how it works with hit creatures. Are you, are you and... talking? Are you talking about imprisonment spell? Maybe. Oh. That's um, an expensive ass component. No, it's free for me. <laughs> <laughs> I need an expensive <laughs> component, okay? Um, I will let uh, I will let Clethis give you some notes on uh, anything else that he was recovered and donated by um, Marius when he was in the desecrated temple of Kelimvor. Um, and we will uh, we will I will get back to that. Put it in your notes, and we'll do that investigation next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I have to be firmed up on her stat block before I reveal it. I expect I'd need to take time to study them and stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it probably gives doesn't you just say, bone. a vampire has this many hit die. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, she's she's also charm. probably not just like a regular vampire either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's uh, just try get as much knowledge as possible. Okay. And after that, do you go through the teleportation circle back to Silvercrest? Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Then we will close the session with Mir and Tilly. Um, was there anything specific you wanted to accomplish in the hour or two that... Um, Red and Giselle were gone. Christy? I don't know, you go first. <laughs> I, I would just think that Tilly would be like very much into uh, trying to uh, stop the panic that she thinks this is going to cause and, and use the temple, get uh, people organized, get as many fires going, magical lights, create daylight spells mm -hmm. and make this in front of the temple as bright as possible. So like people mm -hmm. are gathering there would, you know, it would stop the panic. Yeah. That okay. would be like a safe haven thing. Uh, I'll give you a like, Charisma check at advantage just to see how reassuring you can be. Yeah, it works fairly well. Um, and a few hours pass. Uh, Mia, what about? Um, I think having prepared commune for other reasons, I think I would set up a commune spell mm -hmm. like the whole hog I'm not sure okay. right in this minute what questions I would ask I can think if you want me to no no you we can table that as you prepare the commune spell um, yeah this would be as um, as Giselle and Red return so just as Tilly is like uh, ushering uh, some of the more tired, like temple hands, like back up to bed, and 
handing out some scraps of food and lighting a few more candles. You finish preparing your ritual and Giselle and Red come back in the antechamber. You see your two friends. Fair to say you might have shocked expressions on your faces. Or... Yeah, we look at Red and they're like, what happened? <laughs> Free <Freeze> frame. <laughs> Yeah, okay. We will pick up there next time at the uh, the reconnection of the group with questions, with anxiety. Is history repeating itself? Is something really bad happening? Is it just a bad omen? Will it pass? What about the Temple of the Dawn Lord? What about Lucretia? What's happening with the elves? So many questions. A year has gone by. What the hell? Yeah. Where's smoke? <laughs> Where the fuck is smoke? It was worse than I could have possibly imagined. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. Great job. And it's 13th, right? Next time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Skip next Wednesday. Play in the 13th. Mm -hmm. Pick up in a couple of weeks. Cool. Till then. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.